Well, hey everyone, my name's Emily and this is Preston and we're super lucky because we get to be your host for today. And yeah, we're continuing our Whistle While You Work series where we believe you can love what you do and do what you love. But hey, the stats are out, Emily. There's a lot of us out there that don't love what we do, like 80% of us. That's a lot of us. And that leads to things like stress and anxiety at work. And it's even led to this term that they're calling work mares. Mm -hmm. Nightmares about the work that we do. Emily, have you ever had a work mare? Yes. I've had many work mares. Listen, work mares are those nightmares about work um, and they feel super real. Uh, nightmares about missing the meeting that you are have to be at that's super important in your life or uh, completely bombing the project that you've been just working on tirelessly. Those are work mares. Um, I've woken up in cold sweats because they feel so real. Listen, M. Night Shyamalan, you ain't got nothing on work mares, that's for sure. Hey, I know there's so many of you that can relate with that, but it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to have nightmares about work. You can actually enjoy what you do. And part of that is knowing what you were uniquely created to do. And that's what today is all about. For sure. So now is a perfect time. We get to talk about this and you get to invite some people to join you. So invite your friends, your family, your neighbors, your coworkers, especially your coworkers, because guys, we're talking about work. So go ahead and click share and let's get after it. Let's do it. Well, welcome to church, everyone. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. At some point in today's service, be sure to text in to check in. That just means to text the word here to the number on the screen. Let us know you're on the other side. Uh, we'd love to be able to pray for you by name. And when you do that, we get that opportunity. And if you do that and it's your first time, we've got a gift that we'd love to send you. It's a t-shirt just as a way of saying, welcome to the fam. Yeah, and speaking of fam, last week was National Volunteer Week, so we got the opportunity to highlight a whole bunch of you who get to serve behind the scenes with Epic, uh, from our Epic MSC team to our chat hosts and street team to Epic Kids. Man, it was so fun to be able to celebrate all you and what you do. Yeah, there's so many people making Epic Church a place for every person in the city and beyond uh, find purpose and meaning uh, in what they're doing. We can't thank you enough for that. Now, you may only see a few of us on screen week to week, but there are so many people who are making it happen. It's literally people just like you who join us, who say, I wanna serve, uh, who are making that difference. And all you gotta do is text the word serve uh, to find your team. Yeah, well, one of those people is Josh Ramirez. Now, Josh actually lives in Harrisburg, which is two hours from where we are here in Philly. And being part of the street team allows him to serve digitally right where he is. And if you haven't heard about the street team before, they're great, you need to know about them. They have a whole bunch of fun, just repping Epic all over the place. So Josh, we are so proud of you. So grateful for all that you're doing and how you help us connect and care for so many people. Um, and Josh just got engaged. So Josh, Come happy on now. engagement. Way to be. Um, he and his fiance, Nicole, um, so great. We're so proud of you. All sorts of good stuff going down in the Ramirez household. Well, hey, congrats to you, Josh and Nicole. We're so excited for you. Can't wait to celebrate with you. Hey, and we want you to be a difference maker. We want you to find your spot. All right, it's a great way to meet some other people. It's a great way to unite around our mission to see every person in the city know Jesus as the forgiver and leader of their lives. Listen, there's a great spot for you. It's just yet to be found. Okay, there's so many places you could jump in. You join our chat host. You could join Epic MSC, our band. Come on, we want to see your talent. Uh, or you could join Josh on the street team. We would love to have you find your spot. All you have to do is text that word serve and get you connected. Well, we couldn't possibly do what we get to do without so many of you serving behind the scenes. And we couldn't do what we get to do without so many of you being so generous. Yeah, we love that we get to be a part of a church family that's for everyone who's not even a part of our church yeah, maybe you're watching and you didn't realize this, uh, but you have a church family who desires to be there for you. All right, that's us. What a beautiful picture of what the church is all about. And for that reason, we can't say it enough. Thank you to everybody who partners with us financially. Um, listen, you're believing in what God is calling us to do in our city. Uh, and if you're not already partnering with us, get in the game. What are you waiting for? We believe in what God's called us to do. All you have to do, text the word GIVE to the number on the screen. 
Yeah, we love being able to see so many of you who are new to Epic get connected, and so many of you be able to grow in your faith in really all areas of your life, including work, because that's what we're talking about yeah. this series. It's all about work. So coming up, we get to talk to somebody uh, from our Epic fam and talk about the work that they get to do, and also what it's been like to make some really hard decisions in their job over the last year. Uh, but right now, we get to sing with our band, Epic MSC, um, and it's a song that's all about God's goodness, uh, talking about what it looks like when we trust God and when we believe God um, and all the goodness and all the faithfulness that happens all over our life because of that. So let's go ahead and sing.
Well, hey, thanks for singing with us and Epic MSC, thanks for leading us. Uh, if you didn't know, each and every week we release their songs on YouTube on Wednesdays, hashtag Worship Wednesdays. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Uh, but for now, we get to introduce you uh, to Say T. Say, thanks for joining us in studio today. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do for work. Sure thing. Uh, so I work for a major pharmaceutical company and we produce one of the top oncology drugs uh, in the world. Uh, specifically, I work in an indication where there hasn't been a new treatment in nearly 50 years. Wow, 50 years? 50 years. That's wild to be on like the cusp of that kind of innovation, Say. Well, Say, so I think you left something off here, all right? We heard that uh, you got some like MMA fighter background in there too, right? Yeah, that's correct. I don't know how you heard that, but I, I was on the verge to, you know, choosing MMA um, as my career, but I had a turning point where I decided to have a family and then chose to pursue this career I'm in now. <laughs> well, hey, I think that's a good call. I've got a family, love being a dad. Uh, but hey, let's, let's rewind a little bit. Let's go back to the beginning of 2020, all right? You started a new job. 2020 was hard for so many people. Um, and just as you had started that, uh, something happened as you were stepping into this new role. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, so, you know, 2020, I'm sure there's plenty of people who were affected by the pandemic. I was going through one of the toughest seasons of my life on a personal level. Um, and then I had received this job at a company that I've been pursuing my whole career. I thought, this is awesome. God is blessing me truly here. Three weeks in, we get a call um, into a meeting that announced our whole department was moving to Switzerland. And essentially we had a choice to either move to Switzerland or find a new job. That's a huge intersection to be at. Like you thought things were heading, you know, hashtag 2020, you thought things were heading in one direction and then everything started to fall apart at the seams. So what did you do? So being in that really tough season of my life, you know, I really learned to, to lean on God. And essentially I just started praying. You know, I knew he had plans for me. Uh, so I would pray to him every night and uh, it's just, I learned to really rely on him at that point. So a couple of things there, you start, uh, like you come to this intersection, I'm sure a lot of people can relate uh, with kind of wondering, you know, what do I do? How do I, move? am I supposed to take a decision? Do I stop doing what I'm doing? A lot of people can relate with that, especially throughout uh, 2020. So tell us a little bit about how you, like what's happened since then. Sure thing. So I, you know, after the announcement, uh, I just, continued on my work. You know, I just had complete faith in God and I was just trying to do what my role was at that time. Started meeting others in the organization that led to a meeting uh, with somebody in the oncology uh, department. And I met with him for 10 minutes. Honestly, I didn't even think that he liked me. It was a really short conversation that led to him referring me to my new hiring manager at that time. Uh, it was a amazing email where he just talked highly of me. And Must have made an impression. I, <laughs> apparently, um, which led to the role that I'm currently in now. Now, you stepped into that role and uh, there was something else that happened as you're acclimating, you're in a new position, um, and you're, you're getting to know all the people that you're gonna be working with in this new role. Um, you're meeting, I believe it was a VP. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, so, you know, and I, I didn't mention previously, this was a role that I wasn't hoping to get for another year and a half to two years being at that company. Uh, so part of my onboarding was meeting with this particular VP. And I, honestly, I don't even know how we landed on the topic, but he had shared with me that his father was a preacher. So I started sharing my faith. And what I shared was, um, you know, I was called to, in 2020, to be bold in my faith. Mm -hmm. So towards the end of the meeting, I said, you know, I'm gonna continue to be bold and share you know, what my beliefs are, my you know, relationship with God. So I would say a week later, I get an email from him where he says, you know, that was a highlight of my week and P.S. continue being bold. That's just remarkable. And I love that you made that decision and said, you know what, 2020 is gonna be about me being bold. Um, and that was when everything was kind of marching in one direction. And then you made that choice to continue to being bold when things were unsure and things were really unclear. Um, only God. <laughs> Only God. Well, say thanks for sharing a little bit about your story. We'd love to be able to pause and take time to pray for you, to pray for others in your field, others at your company. Thank you. Cool. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Uh, we thank you that you can um, give us great purpose right where we are in the work that we get to do. And I just thank you for um, Say's boldness, for just giving him the ability to be bold and to be calm and to trust you when it seemed like uh, things were are all starting to unravel around him. Uh, we thank you that he was able to be bold in his faith 
um, and that that opened up doors that might not have been possible to be opened up without that. I pray that we all uh, feel encouraged to be able to do the same exactly where we work. Uh, we pray over Say, uh, we pray over uh, his son and his family, and we just ask for uh, your hand to be over them this year. Uh, we also pray for the pharmaceutical company and all those that are ingrained in healthcare and, and serving and caring for others. Uh, we know that this has been an extremely difficult year, but we just pray that um, they are gonna continue to do incredible things in your name. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And thanks for praying for us. Say, thanks for joining us in studio. Keep being bold, man. We love that. Um, but hey, there's one other thing now, maybe a lot of people don't realize. You've got a pretty special connection with our lead pastor, Kent, right? I do. Tell us a little bit about that. So, so Kent was originally my oh, youth pastor. Hang on, hang on. Look at that. What the? <laughs> I haven't seen this photo. I don't know how long. Wow, this is a terrible photo. Um, but Kent was my youth pastor, and that's actually how I came to Christ when I was 16. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's incredible. I can't get over this picture. I can't get over that photo either. <laughs> um, so I'm sure there's lots of stories that you would have oh, of man. Kent from years ago. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what Kent was like maybe back in the day? <laughs> sure, so, so Kent I, I feel is a little more tame now. Um, however, when he was a part of the youth group, he was a little more wild. You know, I would definitely say that he is the prank master. <laughs> prank master. Oh man, oh man. Well, we're going to catch up with, with Say and hear all about these pranks. Um, but speaking of the man, the myth, the legend, uh, up next is Kent. So let's go ahead and check out the message for today. Hey everybody, my name is Kent, I'm the lead pastor here at Epic, and I'm so glad you're doing church with us today. This is the third part in a series called Whistle While You Work, and our goal in this series is to help you learn how to love what you do and do what you love. And here's the thing, I believe that you can. And so now that we're a few weeks into the series, I have to ask, how was work this week? Was it good? Did you take some of what we talked about last week and, and put it into practice this week? Uh, did you remind yourself this week that you're not working for people or a paycheck, but that you're actually doing your work for God? Did you do your work this week with all of your heart? Did you do it with excellence? Did you bring your energy to it? Because remember, you're the one who decides what kind of energy you bring to a room. I tell my kids this all the time. I say, you can control exactly two things, your attitude and your effort. So bring the best of both. Did you do that this week? Did you bring your absolute best? Because here's the deal, everything speaks. Everything you do says something to the people around you. And did you remember that God wants your life to be a reflection of what he's like? And did you remember that, that part of the purpose of your life at work is to show that God is at work in your life? I mean, if you did any of that this week, I just wanna say, Way to go, like that's how it should be. I love that thousands of us this week went to work with a new perspective and renewed purpose for our work. I mean, what good is what we talk about on Sunday if it doesn't make a difference in our lives on Monday? Man, what happens here should change us. It should move us. It should help us grow and become the people that God always dreamed for us to be. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for taking this seriously allowing God to go to work in your life to help you grow and make you better. Way to go. Now, if you watched last week and you didn't do any of that, dude, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Uh, but I do have a little video that I want you to watch because this is what it's like being your pastor. Check it out. Funny, because it's true, right? But that's okay, I do the same thing. Uh, let's just decide we're gonna start fresh today. Studies show that 80% of us are dissatisfied at work. And part of the reason why is because of what we talked about last week. And that is that whenever you don't have the right perspective on work, it can be hard to find purpose and meaning in it. And in fact, uh, what I said last week was this, was that for most of us, you don't need a new job. Now your job needs a new you. And I still stand beside that because here's the deal, for most of us, just a change in perspective would be a game changer. But that's not always the case. You see, sometimes the reason why we're so dissatisfied at work is because we're not doing the kind of work that we were made to do. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Here's the question. How do I know what I was made to do? Okay, and how do I figure that out? 
Because here's the deal, if you could figure out what you were made to do, then you're well on your way toward loving what you do and doing what you love. Now the problem is no one ever teaches us how to do this. Like all they do is wait till you're about three or four years old and then they ask you this question, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And what's funny is we already have an answer, don't we? Yeah, I wanna be a policeman or a teacher or a singer or a doctor slash ninja or something crazy like that. It reminds me of when my kids were little. Uh, one of our friends, Joanne, took our daughter Kaylee out to the park. And while they were out, she asked Kaylee what she wanted to be when she grew up. And Kaylee thought about it, and she looked back up like kids do, and she says, a weeder. Well, Joanne was super impressed by that. She's like, here she is, three years old. She's already thinking about leadership. Wow. Well, Joe told me that part of the story, and I was like, of course she is. She's a Jacobs. It's in her blood, right? No doubt about that. Well, she looked back at Kaylee and she says, wow, a leader, huh? And then Kaylee reached down, pulled some grass out of the ground. And she says, no, a weeder. Like she legit wanted to pull weeds for a living. Like that was her aspirations. Those were her goals, which is actually better than what my son said. When he was little, I asked him one time, I said, I said, Cohen, uh, when you grow up, you want to be a pastor like daddy? He looked back at me and said, nah. And I was like, wait, you know, maybe he didn't understand me. I said, are you sure? Like when you grow up, you don't want to be a pastor like, like me? He said, no. Nah. So I said, well, well, what do you want to do? He thought about it for a second. He looked back at me and he went, oh, I know, a lobster. And I was like, lobster? That's not a career, that's a crustacean. Like, come on, man, you got to do better than that. Listen, those Jacobs, they shoot for the stars. I'm just saying. And in fact, Kaylee, she's 13 now. She said this this past week. Here's what she said. She says, Dad, I want to travel the world in a food truck. And I was like, in a food truck? And I was like, baby, baby, no, you want to own a company and, and have a fleet of food trucks, right? And she was like, no, nah, just one. I was like, oh, my goodness. Anyways, here's the deal. Whenever we're little, people ask us all the time, what do you want to be? And we always have an answer. That is, until college, when it really matters, right? Then we have no clue what we want to be, so we change our major like two or three times, and we end up working at a Build-A-Bear. Isn't that true? Right? Or we decide to just do whatever our parents did, because we uh, too much pressure. We just got to make a decision. Or we decide to do whatever we're pressured to do by society or culture. Or we decide to, to do whatever uh, would be a good decision as far as potential salary or, or future job security. The problem is we never really stop and consider what kind of work God created us to do. And what happens is we wake up one day in our 20s, 30s, maybe even our 40s, and we think to ourselves, man, there's got to be something better than this. And I just want you to know, there is. And there's a way to figure out what exactly you were created to do. Now, I want you to see this. This is an important principle to understand in, in relation to all of this. Here it is. God's thumbprints on your life are clues to his plans for your life. God's thumbprints on your life are clues about his plans for your life. You see, God has uniquely created and designed you. And the more you understand how God has uniquely created and designed you, the more you'll begin to understand the unique plans that God has for you. Now, I know this seems really simple, but you know who doesn't get this? Yeah, people on the first three weeks of American Auto. You know what I'm talking about? Like so many of them start out thinking, yes, I think I could be the next American Idol. But then they start singing, and you're like, oh no, that is not true. There is no way that you're going to be the next American Idol. It's like, I don't know what you were made to do, but this ain't it. Like, you should do something else. In fact, if you dusted their vocal cords for God's fingerprints, there wouldn't be any. None at all. Why? Because that is not what they were created to do. See, no matter how much passion or desire or even hard work someone puts in, the truth is, if they don't have some natural ability or ability to learn that particular thing, then that's not what they were made or created to do. You know, I think sometimes we suffer from the Michael Jordan myth. And here it is, and that is that, that Michael Jordan became Michael Jordan as a result of sheer will, determination, and hard work. But that's not true. Like, yeah, he was uniquely gifted and created with a certain amount of natural athletic ability that made all that other stuff possible. See, that's, that's part of God's unique thumbprint on his life. 
You see, Jordan became Jordan in part because that's what he was gifted and created to do. And in that same kind of way, you and I, we've been uniquely gifted and created to do some things as well. The trick is figuring out what in the world those things are. And so how do we do that? Three things. You take the time to evaluate your unique passions, abilities, and experiences. You take the time to evaluate your unique passions, abilities, and experiences. Listen, this is huge because oftentimes what you and I were created to do is found at the intersection of those three things. Let's talk about your passions. Uh, Here's what I mean by that. What fires you up? Like what gets you excited? But what is it that you love to do? What is it that you care about more than maybe other people care about? What is it that makes your heart beat fast? Those, those are your passions. Now, here's another way to think about it. What breaks your heart? Or what is it that you just can't stand? You know, Popeye, whenever his, his girlfriend, Olive Oil, would be hit on by Brutus or bothered by Brutus, he would say it this way, that's it. That's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. Listen, these are your passions, and God has given you them for a reason. Now look at Psalm 37, verse 4. It says this, Take delight in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And you see, the scripture says here that, that as we follow God, and as we keep him first in our, in our life, he'll begin to give us the desires of our heart. That doesn't mean that God is going to grant all of our wishes like some kind of genie in a bottle. What it means, though, is that God will begin to place or put new desires on the inside of us. And so what is it that fires you up? Like whatever it is, it's not there by accident. No, God put that there. God gives us the desires of our heart. So what kinds of passions, what kinds of desires are rattling around in your heart these days. It's important that you know what they are because why? They're thumbprints. And those thumbprints are clues to the kind of work that you should spend your life doing. It's the kind of work that that after a long day's work, you're tired, but you're kind of filled up at the same time because you're excited that you got to do it. It's the, the kind of work where if money wasn't an issue, you'd want to spend the best hours of your day doing that one thing. Listen, that's the kind of thing. These are clues to the kind of work that we should spend our lives doing. So that's your passions. Let's talk about your abilities. Uh, Your natural abilities are the things that you're born with. These are the things that just kind of come easier for you than maybe they come for other people. Uh, These are the things that you've just always kind of had a knack for. Uh, These are the things that whenever you do them, other people around you say, man, you're like really good at that. Listen, that's not an accident. That's by design. Those are your natural gifts and abilities. And it's God who put them in you. Now look at Psalm 139, verse 13. It says this, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. He's saying this, he's saying, hey, you didn't just create my outside, but before I was ever even born, you created who I am on the inside. And your natural abilities, they're part of how God created you. Like, what are those things for you? What are those things that have just kind of come naturally, that that you've never really had a hard time with? Now, if you struggle trying to figure out what you're good at, what your natural abilities are, I just want to encourage you to be vulnerable enough to be willing to ask some people that you're close to what they think. Just literally say, hey, I'm, I'm working on something, trying to figure something out, and I need your help. Now, what are a few things that you think that I'm good at. Just send them a text and I'm telling you, it'd be so helpful to get some other people's perspective. And so those are your natural gifts and abilities. Now, if you're a follower of Jesus, there's a whole other section of gifts and abilities that the scripture talks about. And this is absolutely fascinating. They're called spiritual gifts. Now, spiritual gift is a special ability that God gives you to serve other people. You get it the moment you become a follower of Jesus. So if you are a follower of Jesus, you might not know it. You might not realize it. But you have a spiritual gift. And the Apostle Paul talks about spiritual gifts in Ephesians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and Romans chapter 12. And each time whenever he talks about them, he uses a completely different list of gifts. It's almost like he's saying, man, there's all kinds of different spiritual gifts. I'm not even going to try to list every single one each time. 
And I don't know what your spiritual gift is. It might be uh, the gift of encouragement or giving or leadership or teaching or serving or mercy. I don't know exactly what it is for you, but I do know that if you're a follower of Jesus, you have one. You do. And, and that gift, whatever it is, it's God's special, unique thumbprint on your life. And it's a clue as to God's bigger plan for your life as well. Now, if you hear that and you're like, man, I have no clue what my uh, spiritual gift might be. We want to help you with that. In fact, we actually created a website, epic.church slash my gifts. It'll take you about five minutes to take this little uh, spiritual gifts assessment. And it'll give you a whole report of what your top gifts might be. It'll even tell you a little bit about each one. So I encourage you, make sure you go check that out. Listen, it's important that you know your natural and your spiritual gifts because they're clues, remember, to God's bigger plan. So those are your abilities. The third thing you need to uh, look for are your experiences. See, your experiences make you uniquely you. Like every experience that you have, it shapes you. Like the way that you grew up, what your family was like, what they value, what your educational experience is in and outside of the classroom, the mentors that you've had along the way, the amazing things that you've experienced, and the not so amazing things that you've experienced, the painful things even that you've experienced. See, here's the thing. Every single one of our pains can actually be part of our purpose. God never wastes a hurt. He can actually use even the most painful things in our lives for good, ultimately. I mean, who better to come alongside someone who's a parent of a child with special needs than someone who's walked that road before? Who better to come alongside and and care for someone who's dealing with an addiction than someone who's fought that kind of a battle before? Uh, Who better to come alongside someone who's walking through a painful divorce than someone who's dealt with that kind of a thing before? Gang, your greatest hurt could lead the way to your greatest opportunity to connect with and serve someone else. And 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 says this, He comforts us in all our trouble so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. And so what are your experiences? It's important that you know them. It's important that you think back through them. The good, the bad, the ugly, the things you regret, the things you wish never would have happened. It's possible, it's possible that God could use even those things to be a clue as to what his future purpose and plan for your life could be. And so those three things, your your passions, your abilities, and your experiences. You take all of those things, all those things together, and and you look at them, and you can start to get a pretty good picture and maybe what God might have placed you on this earth to do with your life. You see, all those things, they're part of God's unique thumbprint on you. And like we said, God's thumbprints on your life are clues about his plans for your life. Now, some of you, you have no idea what you're passionate about. And it's not because you're, you're not passionate or you don't have passions. It's because you've just never taken the time to think about it. Others of you, you have no idea what your natural or spiritual gifts would be. And it's not because you don't have any natural gifts or spiritual gifts. It's because you've never taken the time to think about, think about it. Now, others of you, uh, you've never considered how your experiences in the past might serve as a bridge to help you connect with and serve some other people. And it's not because God wouldn't use those things to do that or that God couldn't use those things to do that. It's because you just haven't given him the opportunity yet. In fact, I think most of us uh, have put more time into our favorite season of our favorite show on Netflix than we have thinking about and trying to figure this out. And gang, I'm telling you, whenever you stand before God one day, he's not gonna ask you about your favorite show on Netflix. No, he's gonna ask you, what'd you do? with all those passions I gave you? What'd you do with all those abilities I gave you? What'd you do with all that life experience that you had? That's what he's gonna ask you about. Listen, I've got really good news for you. You were created with a desire and capacity to do great work, and God has given you everything you need to do it. I've also got some pretty challenging news for you. You were created with a desire and capacity to do great work. 
And you are accountable for what you do with what God has given you. In fact, this is such a big deal. I want to show you what the Apostle Paul said to a young man that he was mentoring at the time, a man named Timothy. Now, he looked at this guy. He saw some abilities. He saw some gifts, just like God looks at you and sees some abilities and gifts. Now, here's what he says in a letter that he wrote to him. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, he says this. Timothy, do not neglect your gift, which is given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Now listen, this wasn't like, hey, Timothy, um, if you have time and, and think about it to do it, or hey, Timothy, hey, if you, if you get around to it, don't neglect your gift. Like This was Paul like getting up in Timothy's grill, getting in his face and saying, Timothy, listen to me. Do not neglect your gift. He says, hey, you have no idea what hangs in the balance of your decision to hear what I'm trying to tell you right now. And I think he's so passionate about it because this is the theme that we see over and over again all through our scripture. Jesus actually talked about this. And he told a story about a time when an owner gave uh, different uh, amounts of money to three different managers, and he went away for a time. And these managers were accountable for how they took care of that money. Well, two of them uh, took the money, invested it, and they doubled it. But one of them took the money and hid it in the ground. And whenever the owner came back, they were held accountable for what they did with what they were given. And like I said, two of them doubled the money, but, but one of them hid it in the ground and did nothing with it. And when that owner saw that, he looks at this guy and he says, you wicked servant. It's like, oh man, tell me how you really feel. And Jesus is saying in this story, he's saying, hey, we're stewards, we're managers of what we've been given. We can't hide it. We can't do nothing with it. We have to do something good with what we've been given. He goes on, verse 15, be diligent in these matters. Uh, give yourself wholly to them. He says, hey, don't hold anything back when it comes to your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your experiences, and, and figuring out how to leverage all of those things. Don't hold anything back. Do everything you can to discover what they are and to develop them. And then he says this, he says, so that everyone may see your progress. You know why he says that? He, what, what he's saying here is, listen, the gifts that you've been given, the talents that you have, the abilities that you have, they're not just for you. They're for everyone else around you. And so if you're not interested in developing them for yourself, then at the very least, be willing to do it for the rest of us. You see, gang, what the world needs is a group of people that are willing to discover what, what God created them to be passionate about and do something about that thing. And what the world needs is a group of people that are willing to do the work of discovering what God gifted them to be able to do and then actually do it to be a blessing to other people. What the world needs is, is a group of people that, that are willing to look in the back, look through their experiences and think about how those experiences could be leveraged to be a blessing in the lives of other people. Again, that's what, that's what your work needs. That's what your home needs. That's what the city needs. That's what our church needs. See, so here's the deal. The gifts that you've been given by God, they're bigger than just you. And they weren't given to you just for you. No, they were given to you for everyone else. It's for everyone's benefit. In fact, Paul, I think, decides that maybe he didn't say this strongly enough. So he writes Timothy another letter. And here's what he says in another letter. He says, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, he says, For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. He uses this incredible word picture where he's basically saying, Hey, don't keep your gifts small. Make sure you do everything you can to make them as big and as impactful as possible. He's saying, God has given you the pilot light of a gift. Don't let that thing stay small. Do everything you can to discover what that is and then develop it so it gets as big as possible. If you let it stay small, it won't bring warmth or light to anyone else. But man, if you fan that thing into flame, look what God could do with it. Paul says, Timothy, don't neglect your gifts. And I think Paul would say, James, and Teresa, or Jesse, or Chris, or Dennis, or Jorge, or Tiffany, or Bill, or Brian, or Matt, Kate, Scott, Jennifer, Keenan. Don't neglect your gifts. Hear me. Don't neglect them. You have no idea 
what hangs in the balance. We're counting on you. God is counting on you. There's too much riding on this for you to let it slip by. So you were created with a desire and capacity to do great work. Get it done. So how do you know what you were made to do? You pay attention to the thumbprints. You you look for what you're created to be passionate about. You look at your abilities. You look at your past experiences because they're all clues as to what God would want you to do with your life. You discover what those things are. You you develop those gifts. It's going to take some work, but God will honor that work. And you remember that it's not just for you. It's for everyone else around you. Gang, just for me, I was thinking about this. I was like, man, um, what is it that I'm passionate about? My pastor asked me one time, what are you passionate about? And just immediately what came back was, um, I'm passionate about church not being boring. That was the first thing that came to mind. When I think about my abilities, I've always been able to be funny. Not, Not the funniest, but I've always been able to be kind of funny. When I think about my spiritual gifts, I've, I've been able to, to teach. That's a gift I feel like God has given me. And I've worked hard over the years to develop that gift. And when I think about my experiences, and I met Jesus when I was 12 years old. And I just want everyone to be able to know Jesus like I feel like I've had the chance to know him. And over the years, over and over again, I've had the opportunity to be mentored by people who are innovators. Now you put all those things together, what I'm passionate about, my abilities, my experiences, you know what you get? You get this. You get our church. And here's the deal. If you'd asked me when I was a kid, hey, what do you think you were created to do? I might not have been able to put it into words. But along the way, I've paid attention to God's thumbprints. I've looked for the clues. And God has given me just enough to keep me going in the right direction. And here I am all these years later, and I look at what God has done and what God is doing. And you know what? I love what I do, and I get to do what I love. And that's incredible. I want that for you too. Let me pray for you. God, we love you. We thank you so much that you first loved us. Give us the wisdom to know what to do with what we just heard and the courage to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I love you guys. See you next week. Well, hey, what an incredible message. Thanks for that, Kent. I love that idea that God's thumbprints on your life are clues to his plans for your life. Uh, And really enjoyed getting to interview Say before that as well. There's so many amazing people that are part of our Epic family, and we got to hear about a few of them today, but we know that there are so many of you. So we decided, we're like, we gotta do something about that. So we created a LinkedIn group, because like, if you're doing work, you should be on LinkedIn. There it is. Um, and it's a place where you can introduce yourself and let us know what you do and really connect with a whole bunch of other people within our Epic network. So all you gotta do is head over to LinkedIn, search for Epic Church Philadelphia, and you'll see our Epic Network group right there. Introduce yourself, say hey, and start connecting with a whole bunch of people from our Epic fam. Come on, Em, I even think there's gonna be people who work for the same company (laughs) that don't realize that there's some other people that are part of Epic uh, that work for that very same company. We'd love to get you guys connected. Go check it out. Yeah, for sure. We know that one title that we don't really see on LinkedIn, but we should, is that title of motherhood. Come on, somebody. Um, In two weeks, we get to celebrate all of the mamas and the motherly figures that are out there. It's going down on May 9th, and we can't wait to make a big old fuss over a whole bunch of you. We know that the last year has been really, really difficult and we just can't wait for it. Yeah, I know. I can't wait to celebrate my wife, Megan. We just welcomed our third daughter a couple of months ago. Um, Look at that. Hashtag girl dad all over the place. (laughs) Um, But she just went back to work recently. So I know Mother's Day is coming right at the right time to be able to celebrate her and all that she's done this past year. Man, we love you, Megan. We celebrate you. We celebrate all you mamas. And make sure that Epic Online is part of your Mother's Day plans. We can't wait to see you. Well, hey, if you haven't already, be sure to text in to check in. You can like, comment, subscribe on our video today. Uh, And if you're new, stick around. Pastor Kent would love the chance to say hi and invite you to our next welcome party. Hey, Em, you think if I updated my LinkedIn profile to MMA fighter, like people would believe that I could (laughs) get it done? Yeah, sure. I mean, if Jake Paul can do it, you can totally do it, Preston. (laughs) See you guys. Well, hey, thanks again for joining us for church today. If you're new, we're glad you're here. And I just want you to know we do church just like this online every single week, and we'd love for you to be a part. 
If you had a good time, make sure you hit that subscribe button, follow us on Instagram, and we'll make sure we keep you in the loop. Listen, no matter who you are, we believe that God has an incredible plan for your life. And we just wanna do our part to help you discover what that is. So keep following along online and make sure you text the word here to the number on the screen so we can make it official, send you your t-shirt and get you all hooked up with everything you need to get connected and be part of the fam. In fact, I personally wanna invite you to be one of our guests at the welcome party because we'd love the chance to get to meet you. Again, so glad you're here today. Text that number and we'll see you next week.